Have you seen these drone shows where up to a thousand drones draw pictures in the sky? The drones used here look like they cost around $2,000 each. During one drone show in Australia, 50 drones fell from the display into the river. That was only 10% of the drones though, putting the total cost of drones in the display at around $1 million. These drone displays use a super accurate satellite positioning system called GNSS RTK, which stands for real-time kinematics. And the receivers are available for just a few hundred dollars each. Then all you need is a radio link to communicate with each drone so you can tell it where to go, and some software to coordinate them. But what about if we want to fly drones autonomously indoors? There are lots of demos on YouTube of multiple drones flying around performing tasks. These systems tend to use a motion capture system like those manufactured by Vicon, which have multiple cameras and IR illuminators, and some software that solves the skeleton of an actor based on markers they wear. A system like this has been used frequently by Stuff Made Here for tracking objects in motion. These systems tend to cost around $10,000 upwards though, but what's a cheaper solution? I found a system from Marvel Mind Robotics which uses ultrasonics to work out the position of a mobile robot. There are four base stations, each with what looks like four ultrasonic transmitters on, and then you can use a number of receivers which can work out where they are relative to the transmitters. All of the units are linked together with a radio link, presumably for sync. The demos look good, although I haven't tested them personally. Apparently they work on drones okay, and the basic set costs nearly 600 euros. But what could I make that costs a lot less? Well, you've probably seen these cheap ultrasonic transceivers, which have an ultrasonic transmitter and receiver, some pins on, and some electronics on the back, and these cost about £3 each. I've linked one to an Arduino here so we can see what they do, and basically they'll send an ultrasonic ping, look for the reflection, and work out the time of flight, so you can work out the distance. These work pretty reliably, and I think the maximum range is about 4 metres, so obviously it only works with the item in front, there's about a 15 degree field of view, so if I pick the box up or move it too far to the side, then we just measure the maximum distance to the next object in the background. So yeah, you can see me moving to the side there, and you can see that big sort of spike we get where we just miss the edge of the object and we just get the wall behind me. If I want to detect something much further away, I'm probably going to need a bigger object to make sure it's reliable, like this big board, so I can actually get up to the 4 metre maximum distance. I'm only doing about 2 metres here. You can still see there's some noise on the trace that we're getting there, on the Arduino plotter, which is basically just measuring the distance which is given to you by the unit, so there's not too much coding here. So we could use these ultrasonic sensors to work out the distance to a solid object, and we could position a robot or a drone, provided there were like solid walls in the space uh, that were uninterrupted, so it could always get a reading. So what we really want, though, is something more like a GPS system, where we've got satellites in the sky, and then we've got a receiver on the robot or the drone or the car or whatever it is, and it works anywhere without having to have that sort of solid surface to actually send and reflect the ultrasonic ping from. So it would be better if we had one of these transmitting that was a beacon, and then another one receiving that could move around, and that could receive the ping, and the two could talk to each other to work out the distance. The problem with using those modules like that, though, is that they deal with sending and receiving the ultrasonic signal themselves, using the electronics on the back of the board. You send a 10 microsecond pulse, which makes the unit emit 8 cycles of ultrasonic burst. Then the echo pin gives you back a pulse depending on how far the sound takes to reflect back. The unit also won't listen until it's been triggered, so if you want to send with one unit and receive on another then they both need to be triggered at once. Unless both units can be wired together then that sync system needs to be wireless. So to solve that I'm using this massive infrared illuminator for CCTV with lots of infrared LEDs on, and I'm going to use that as a beacon and receive the infrared with this little module. It's actually a proximity module but I've taken the LED off so it only receives and doesn't see itself. So now I've got a MOSFET attached to the Arduino, and you can see it's light on there flashing on and off as I'm pulsing it, and that's going to switch the current to switch on the infrared illuminator. If you use an old camcorder without a very good IR filter, you can actually see the LEDs flashing, otherwise they're impossible to see with the human eye. So there's my module receiving, and if I take the infrared beacon away, you can see the light stops flashing, and if I put it back it works again. So let's see what sort of range we get out of this. I've got the receiver in my hand here. I'm just going to walk backwards to the other end of the room into the dark. And we can see that works for quite some distance. And it can still see that infrared beacon because of that massive amount of infrared light. And I can turn that thing to about 180 degrees. So pretty much horizontally in either direction before it stops working. Because infrared light's reflecting off everything. 
So now the setup looks like an infrared beacon alongside the ultrasonic which is transmitting and those are both getting triggered at the same time. On the other side I've got the infrared receiver which is going to receive that sync pulse and trigger the receiving ultrasonic so it goes into listening mode and I've taken off the transmitter from that so it doesn't hear itself. So now we should be able to transmit with one and receive on the other. So now we get a ranger which works just as well as it did with one module reflecting off a flat surface only we don't need the flat surface anymore we've just got that one tiny beacon and we're not reliant on there being a large flat wall there so I can move around quite a bit and we still get fairly reliable results and I think I've probably gone bigger than the 15 degree field of view that we would normally get with one module. So pretty happy with that so far. But how far will it work? So I've put that on the edge of the table and I can walk all the way back here to about 4 to 5 meters which is the maximum range for these devices and we still get fairly reliable results and I can move sideways as well a fair amount and it still works. Now there's a big square spike there I think that was the infrared cutting out where it couldn't see the infrared beacon anymore so obviously everything stops working but otherwise that's pretty impressive. We get quite good results and we're not reliant on a large object to reflect the sound off just that tiny module there sat on some breadboard acting as a beacon. Well that worked better than expected. I was thinking about these ultrasonics though and basically they're not supposed to actually see themselves like this. They're supposed to see the reflection of the sound that they send. So that might explain why it's not totally reliable and there's still a few dropouts. So I'm just going to try something which is basically turning around the transmitter and bouncing it off another surface. And then I thought about that surface and decided we can probably extend the field of view if we make that a specific shape. Yep, it's a dome, so it's basically an inverted satellite dish which reflects the ultrasonic off a dome to try and spread it some more. I've got the infrared illuminator on the front along with its MOSFET at the back and the ultrasonic module at the back and then the ultrasonic transmitter is actually stuck in the front here so it reflects back off the dome surface. So let's do exactly the same thing with that. Now you'll notice there's two lines on my plot. The blue line is the raw data. The green one is a cubic spline interpolation that smooths out all the problems. I actually got ChatGPT to write the code for this and I'll publish it as usual. There is some infrared dropout, so if I go to certain regions, the infrared receiver just there can't see the infrared beacon anymore. So again, we get some rubbish data, but the green line averages it out. So that won't be catastrophic. I get quite a wide range of motion side to side here, it's not worse than it was anyway, I'm not sure if it is better, it's really hard to tell, and everything works as long as the infrared receiver can still see the beacon, and if it doesn't we get those massive square spikes, but otherwise the green line's pretty smooth. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PayPal Honey. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America. It's just a little button that sits at the top of your browser, it's an online saving sidekick. Honey automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to. When you're at the checkout for whatever you're buying, Honey tells you if there are coupons available for the purchase. It works out what gives you the best savings and applies them to your cards. I use Honey all the time to save money on batteries, tools and other stuff I buy for projects. It works for things you're already buying on lots of sites where you're already shopping. Many people don't understand how easy it is. It's fun to use Honey because it's exciting to see how much you can save on something you were planning to buy anyway. When there's a coupon, Honey finds discounts of 18% on average, and Honey has over 100,000 five-star Google reviews. You can add it to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash jamesbruton, but make sure you use my special link with slash jamesbruton on the end because that's how you can support the channel. Right, let's get back to this positioning system. I've built two of those, one of them is over in this corner and the other one's over in this corner. Each one has its infrared beacon on and of course each one is an ultrasonic transmitter and I also have another infrared beacon sat in the middle here so we can't possibly miss the infrared. My receiver is now two ultrasonic receivers both with the transmitter removed so they don't hear themselves and an Arduino Mega in the box and I've angled those roughly so they point at the two transmitters. And then to keep those ultrasonics in sync we're using the infrared when it turns on and off so on the rising edge when all those infrared beacons turn on it triggers the ultrasonic on this side and the receiver on this side when it receives that infrared pulse and when the infrared turns off then it triggers the other side of the ultrasonic and the same on the receiver and then we can differentiate between the signal coming from each side. 
So I'm just showing the interpolated filtered data on the plot here basically for both of those sensors. If I move in and out then of course they move up and down together as we get closer and further and if I move side to side they diverge from each other as we get closer to one transmitter and further away from the other. So on the whole that seems pretty reliable with those three infrared beacons we don't get any infrared dropout now so that's working pretty well. But waving my hands in the air is not very exciting, so what we're going to try and do is fly a drone and use that ultrasonic positioning system to hold it in place and see how that works for us. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all these parts are printed in Pro PLA+, which will hopefully be strong enough. So we've got a basic drone structure here with four arms and a body in the middle. So there's two more pieces here which fit onto the two corners there, which are the arms to attach the motors to. And we've got the cheapest motors off Amazon, which are the 2200 kV motors, which are pretty cheap. This is a bit of a funny size, it's roughly a 320 frame, so I've made it pretty small to fly indoors. In contrast to the cheap motors, I'm using a Pixhawk 6C from Hollybro, which was about £200, including the power distribution board. It's overkill for this project, but I'm planning some more things in the future. And my transmitter for now is the good old FlySky set. The lower shelf of my drone supports the power distribution board, and on top of that there's another shelf which holds the Pixhawk. And yes, you've guessed it, on top of that is my ultrasonic receiver system. There's quite a lot of stuff attached to this drone, so hopefully it will fly. I'm using 6 inch diameter rotors with 3 props, or whatever you want to call those on, so we get more thrust. Well, it does fly. I can fly it manually. It's not too hard to hold in position, although there's quite a lot of turbulence in this small room with those rotors going crackers. Um, it does have altitude hold, but I'm not using it, so I'm trying to hold that manually as well. Um, and I can still sort of fly. It's a bit chaotic though, so hopefully the positioning system will be able to hold it in position. I think I'll put it down for now before I crash. I thought I should test the positioning system here with the rotors actually running to check it still works. And that's because basically they're quite loud and we're trying to listen for ultrasonic sound. Also sound is just basically a vibration in the air and we've got this massive downdraft which is probably going to blow the air away. But yeah, you can see as I power up the rotors there on the drone that our data becomes completely rubbish and it just spikes all over the place. If I power off the rotors again, then yeah, we get lovely smooth data again. So this is a massive problem. Now the Pixhawk does actually support an official ultrasonic module which connects straight to it and it says that basically it can cut through the rotor downdraft to avoid obstacles. Similarly, the Marvel Mine system supports drones, although the drone pictured here is much smaller with much less downdraft. And perhaps both of these ultrasonic systems are tuned to specific frequency that aren't interfered with by the downdraft from the rotors. So that's probably not going to work for a drone very easily. I do have another solution which I'm going to try in the future, which is this, which you might recognise if you've watched some of my older videos, and I already own it, and it's optical, and it's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to come back to drones, but for now we're going to try another solution for the ultrasonics. I took the whole setup down to my workshop where there's a lot more space for testing, and we don't have slopey ceilings and things like that. So yes, we're going to be putting this on the omnidirectional robot, and this is something I built in my channel a while ago. It's got ball wheels and it can move in any direction and that means we can move around keeping that ultrasonic facing forward which is quite important. Now I can steer the robot as well if I want to but for now we're just going to drive backwards and forwards and left and right and you can check the original build out in my channel. That's my little LED flashing so it looks like the infrared is working and that's quite a big space so it looks like we've got range for that at least. As before, we've got the two ultrasonic transmitters and the three infrared transmitters all in a line and those are around three metres from where the robot is currently standing and there's a bit of space behind it. I've laid down two bits of wood on the ground either side here just by the two ultrasonic transmitters and these are roughly what seems to be the usable area. And again, those are about three metres apart so we've basically got a three by three of usable space. 
So I'm just manually controlling the robot and looking at the data. The green line is the left hand ultrasonic and the yellow line is the right hand. So the sweet spot of course is in the middle there. If I go too close and go to one side then we get quite a few dropouts which I'm pretty sure is on the ultrasonics. But if I come back before the line there where the floor changes then things work pretty well. I can pretty much get as close as I can to the wood there before we get too many problems with the data. Although there seems to be more problems with the right hand transmitter than the left hand one for some reason. We could filter out those values by just taking out values that are too big and we could also take out values that change too quickly which would get rid of some of the spikes. But pretty much in the middle of this we've got quite a lot of usable space where the data is pretty much okay or at least enough to work out where we are if we even drop some of the values which are bad. The stick on top of the robot's actually wobbling quite a lot because these wheels aren't totally smooth which is possibly causing me quite a lot of issues. I probably should have used a different Omni wheel robot from my arsenal but um, when it's still at least the data's okay so this isn't a great system although it didn't cost very much and I'm pretty surprised it works as well as it does. Just going to try moving those transmitters in a bit just so they're on the other side of the bit of wood and trying to point them towards the middle and we'll see how that works out for us. So that gives me almost the same kind of range side to side. I can push almost right out to that piece of wood. If I go too far it does drop out, but if I get my outside wheel it doesn't go further than the middle of the dish basically where the tripod is, then it works pretty reliably. So that's actually not too bad. I can go closer now as well because of course those two things are closer together so we don't drop out so much. That's the right hand side dropping out as I just pass it. And also we sometimes get problems with that one on the left hand side. I'm not sure why it's that one that seems to go wrong the most. It's probably a, some sort of alignment issue with the robot just facing those ultrasonics in the right direction. Because of course those are fixed. If we could track the two tripods with the ultrasonic transmitters on, they'd probably work a lot more reliably. But that's another whole problem. Right back here it works as well. So I guess they're facing forward slightly more. So it would make sense that we have slightly more range front to back but on the whole that's not too bad you probably could position the robot with this and have it autonomously drive to a position the next plan is to stick the other tracker on a drone probably build two drones and then try to fly them autonomously this tracking device is wireless which means that i can coordinate the drones off board and have one central system that knows where they are at all times so we'll come back to drones and this tracker in another video and I'm pretty sure it's going to work quite well. For now I'm going to publish the ultrasonic CAD and code if you want to see how that works or use it in your own projects and that's totally open source. So check out my Patreon or YouTube channel membership if you'd like to. Alright that's all for now.